cooking? What you gotta cooking? What you gotta cook it? Cause I'm hoping hard it be me hiding in your favorite recipe. Hiding in your favorite recipe. Hi, I'm Jill Ferris, and this is Cooking for Bachelors. And thanks to you, our loyal fans, we now have a 70% male audience, which means we're taking our tips and tricks and leaving the kitchen. And we're gonna start adding some lifestyle videos to our series. Today, we're at Nat Sherman Pop-Up Shop in Red Hook, Brooklyn, and we're gonna talk about cigar etiquette. This is Jakub, and he's the manager of the Nat Sherman Pop-Up Shop. You know, my story of cigar smoke started when I was 12 years old, yeah, believe it or not. My father tried to, my, tried, took my brothers and I and taught us how to smoke cigars and drink brandy because he said, I know you're going to smoke and drink, so you might as well learn how to do the good stuff. Yeah, nice dad. Okay, but to this day, I have cigar etiquette. So there are were, there were things that my father taught me that I see people doing other things now. And I'm always like old school, like, no, that's not the way you do it. So I just wanted to talk about some of those things. One is clipping the cigar. So dad always used like the little V clip just to get a little bite. And sometimes if he didn't have his clipper with him, he'd actually bite the cigar for a very small opening. Nowadays, I see the guillotine clipped right off. So what do you think the difference is and what do people prefer? Well, there's three styles uh, of cutter that's popular currently. Uh, you've got the straight or the double guillotine style, which has been the most popular for many years. It's going to allow the fullest draw of the cigar, so many people enjoy that the most because it gives them the biggest flavor experience there. The V-cut will go a little bit more constricted, tighten the draw a little bit more, The people sometimes feel that that concentrates the flavor for them better. And then the punch is the smallest of the three cut styles, and that'll produce the tightest of the draws, but some people enjoy that as well, and it's just a matter of personal preference. So what about the label or the ring? I mean, my father used to say that people leave it on, they're showing off, it's like having a pocketbook with somebody's initials on it. Um, I know that sometimes the ring is actually wrapped in the wrapper, so if you take it off, you're gonna unravel it, and that could be very embarrassing but it's also a way to keep the label. So for cigar bands, to me, it's a matter of personal preference. Whether you leave the band on or take the band off, it's gonna be whatever your style is on that front. Bands themselves are fun to collect and the artwork and <laughs> history behind the bands go back many, many years and, and have a lot of richness to them also. And you don't wanna smoke it, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, so now the other thing is lighting a cigar. Um, once again, Dad said that you never hold your flame to the cigar um, and that you turn it around as you're lighting it so that you have a nice even flame. So what is the story with that? Because I'm seeing now the lighters and a lot of people hold it directly on the cigar. We have a lot of uh, misuse in terms of lighters these days. So you're still using the same style in terms, no matter what tool you're using to light the cigar, is you don't want to scorch that and your, desi your desire is to just have an even light. So whether you're using a butane lighter, matches, uh, cedar spills, you want to hold the flame just a touch away from the cigar because you're going to draw the flame in. Okay, and one more question is about the ashes. My father always used to say, you don't, you know, get rid of your ashes like you do on a cigarette where you're just like pepping it every, you know, every smoke, every toke. You let the ashes sit on the cigar, not too much till it topples over, but what is the thought on that? It's, it's something that's been brought into etiquette, but never, I think, properly explained as to why. So the, uh, <laughs> the reason you want to let your ash hold is because that's insulating the ember of your cigar. So that's keeping the flame cooler and thus delivering a better flavor for you. Uh, so if you be constantly ashing your cigar, you're not only introducing that ash back into the cigar, right. you're pressing down, you're also resulting in a hotter smoke, which is not going to give you the full flavor experience you're looking for. So there we have it. We have learned a lot of cigar etiquette, believe it or not. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to write in the comments section below our video, and we will be happy to answer any questions you have. So now we're going to talk about the tobacco and the sizes of cigars. 
Where is most of the tobacco grown for cigars? Cigar tobacco is grown all over. So a lot is done in Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Honduras. We do a lot of cigar tobacco in Connecticut, in the River Valley of Connecticut. Uh, you've got cigar tobacco coming from Mexico in the San Andres Valley, Peru, uh, Ecuador. So there's, there's a lot of different locales for cigar tobacco. Yeah, I, I heard Connecticut's very popular for the wrappers. Connecticut has been traditionally one of the most popular wrapper tobaccos out there, both for lighter shade grown tobacco, like you see with the Epoca here, or for darker tobaccos as well. So can you explain to me some of the differences in sizes? Yeah, in size will, will come down to preference and just the situation in terms of where you're smoking and how much time you have. Uh, so this is one of the most popular sizes here, what's called the Robusto, which is a, a great shorter format for cigars. It's a shorter and thicker style and doesn't require a lot of time commitment. For a longer format, one of the most famous is the Churchill size, which is seen here in our Epoca line. Named after Winston Named Churchill. Named after Winston Churchill. And, uh, Let's look at this. His favorite in terms of uh, cigar length and ring gauge there. So how long does it take to smoke something like that? For me personally, as a slower smoker, this takes me somewhere around an hour, 20 minutes, an hour and a half. For many of my customers though, they'll finish that in, in an hour or less. Uh, I'm gonna have to try one of those, I think. And what do we have here, Mr. Big? Yeah, this is one of the most in vogue sizes as of late. Uh, cigars have been getting thicker and thicker over the years. And this is what's called a six by 60, uh, which is referring to the dimensions or a, a Toro Gordo many times as well. Gordo, that's what it looks like. You know, it's like bigger is better. This is something. There are the other style of cigars was called the figurado shape, which will be any cigar with any sort of taper to it. Uh, so what you're looking at here is the classic number two or torpedo size, uh, which has the tapered head at the top. Why is it called number two? That's the... Number two is hearkening back to uh, the most famous manufacturer to use that size, which is Monte Cristo back in Havana. I see. Ooh, that's a nice, interesting tidbit of information. And what else do you have in that magic box? So in that other styling, in that tapering, is what's called a perfecto, which you'll see here. The perfectos have tapering at both the head and the foot of the cigar. Uh, so you have a constantly evolving ring gauge as you're smoking here, which allows you to both light it very easily at the foot, and also introduces a great amount of complexity because the ring gauge of the cigar is changing as you're smoking it down. That's very interesting. What else do we have? One of the most popular sizes historically is what's called the Dahlias or the Lonsdale here. This was before the Churchill considered a large cigar. Uh, these days by our standards it's almost considered tiny. Um, but this is just <laughs> a great balance in terms of wrapper to filler ratio here which is why it's been so, uh, so widely uh, loved for many, many years. And why is this cigar not individually wrapped like the others are? So it'll come down to manufacturer preference on many lines in terms of that. The main benefit of wrapping a cigar in cellophane is you're looking at uh, the wrapper staying intact during shipping. Well, <laughs> I've been talking about cigars all day and I'm dying to smoke one. So I have chosen the Sterling series here in the what's called Mareva size, which is a traditional Corona shape. I think this is uh, a perfect size for me right now. And this one has a little band on the uh, foot, but we're gonna take that off. Don't wanna light that. And I am going to move this gently to see if it will take come off. And I am taking off my band. And it is now a ring. Are you gonna clip my cigar? What do you got? Absolutely, I'd love to do. We're gonna do a little V cut here. A little V time. cut. Oh, he knows, you see? He was listening. Okay. Oh, look at that. This one, I'll just go this way and that's a little V, so it's got a little there. wedge. And we've got a lighter here. Uh -huh. So this is a torch flame. So we'll keep the flame away from the uh, cigar. There we go. And you're in business. Right. Oh, and holding the cigar. Okay. So here's a nice way to hold it. It's like chopsticks. Should I teach you? You put your thumb here. Okay, cheers. Cheers.